Welcome again to the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. It really does help with the algorithm. And click the bell icon. That way you'll get notifications every time we post new content. If you're interested in full length current Shooting USA shows, there's a link to our Vimeo channel in this video's description. A few dollars a month gets you unlimited streaming of over 60 full length episodes. Also remember to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. So now, here's what you came to see. When you think of the American dream, the entrepreneurial spirit is the backbone of it. Add to that the pit bull-like tenacity ingrained in every U.S. Army Ranger, and you have retired Sergeant Major Tom Fuller, the man behind Armageddon gear. Welcome to Buena Vista, Georgia, home to the Armageddon Gear World Headquarters and founder Tom Fuller. With his 22-year military career behind him, Tom is selling what he knows, shooting gear. I've always been entrepreneurially minded. I'd always wanted to do my own thing. I remember guys asking me, I said, what are you gonna do when you get out? I said, I don't know, but I'm gonna work for myself. Tom gained an initial foothold in the industry working for a larger company. And there he identified an opportunity. Under that umbrella that at the time was Bushnell Holdings, uh, we got a lot of calls from people going, hey, we need Barry compliant, U.S. made, looking for high quality sewn goods. Barry compliance, simply put, requires that anything sold to the U.S. military be U.S. made from U.S. sourced components. Well, the brands we had, like most at that time, had been bought and weren't made in the U.S.A. anymore, which they weren't Barry compliant, which means they couldn't be sold to the military in contract. Constantly getting those calls, hey, we need Barry compliant made in U.S.A. soft goods. Tom's first idea that would turn out to be a big one, a custom rifle sling based on a design from his time as a ranger. I hated every sling I'd ever been issued. The sling was kind of a necessary evil, you gotta have it. Hurts, doesn't, you know, just kind of in the way. But uh, in, when I was in second ranger battalion, we had a sewing machine in the barracks. And guys made this sling that they fashioned themselves and, and was running it. And I remembered that and I called a, a buddy of mine who was in the, who was out of the military at the time and worked in the industry. I said, do you remember those slings that you guys made in the barracks? He goes, yeah, I actually have one. So he sent me one and I'm like, man, this is, this is cool. I really like it. So I thought, man, this would be a great idea. He sold as many as he could have made and that led to the next big idea. The first big thing we did was uh, the Army was doing a sniper tripod kit. And they said, we need a way to carry this tripod. We need a sling for a tripod. We need to sling a tripod over our shoulder. And I said, man, I don't, I don't think there's anything like that. Never heard of anything like that. But I could probably figure out how to do it. And in my mind, I saw it, but I can make it. That vision took him from designer to manufacturer. And uh, from that sample that we made, sent to them, uh, they wanted, I think, 6,000 of them but he didn't have the capital, material, or machines to fill the order. What he did have, an understanding of how military procurement systems work. I called one of the larger of those military resellers, and I said, look, I'll give you really good margins on this if you'll prepay. I already had the order in hand from the government. I said, I can make it if you'll prepay me. So they prepaid me. Tom started buying machines and materials, and Armageddon gear was off to the races. Just as the first 6,000 piece order was completed and delivered, the Marine Corps had adopted the same tripod system that the Army snipers had used, but instead of a sling, they wanted a scabbard. We figured out how to sew it, and they wanted 4,000. So we started making those as soon as we were done with, with that. And that's about the time everything changed for Armageddon Gear because I found Miss Brenda. With Miss Brenda came a generation of textile manufacturing experience. She used to run a 200-person sewing plant in South Carolina before the sewing was moved overseas and just knows her way around the sewing room and the sewing machine. But I've, I've worked in sewing all my life, and it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. So Miss Brenda staffed the sewing room, and more military contracts came in the door. We had prototyped, made, and had sent a, a gun case to Remington for the uh, the XM2010 sniper system they were competing for, they won it with our soft goods components. 
That gun case had multiple components and became a sustaining order for many years. And that led to the next rifle system for the military. So that was just one by Barrett, the, the MRAD. And we've, for that one, we're doing the, the gun case, the sling, the suppressor cover, accessory pouch, cleaning kit pouch, and toolkit pouch. So every soft good going with that. So since we've been in business, every rifle DOD has adopted, we have done the soft goods for. With government contracts driving the early success of Armageddon gear, Tom Fuller was able to position his company to catch the wave of popularity surrounding precision rifle competition. And it would be a design for an all-purpose shooting bag that would be the centerpiece. There was a lot of luck involved. The really lucky part is we started making products for the precision rifle shooting community as that sport just took off. And because we were diversified, not just relying on the shooters of that sport, we were able to invest heavily into automated machinery, uh, better, better equipment, and we're able to kind of take what's always been a, a mom and pop type business uh, and, and kind of do it in a bigger way. It would be one design in particular that would take Armageddon gear to the next level. Gap grind like three years ago, I saw a game changer bag. I'm like, what's that? That's kind of weird. And we shot off of it. Me and the guys on my squad, it was there as like a sample. We're like, man, this thing is amazing. Oh, isn't that nice? Utility patent 10,048,034. Grasping front support bag. Belongs to Clifton Reeser of Reeser Precision Solutions. So I called Clifton and I said, man, we're, we're seeing this bag and everybody wants them. We can't, we can't get them. How, how do we get one? And he's like, man, I'll get a couple to you. Called him again. I was like, hey, man, you've got a product that people are wanting and we can't find. I have production capacity and a good brand reputation. I said, would you consider working together? And he goes, yeah, I would. From there, Tom and Clifton reached a licensing agreement, and the game changer went into full production. From the first month we launched it, it was our most successful product in the first month we've ever had. With the licensing for the design, the next step is to innovate with new materials to make this product appealing to hunters. The wax canvas changed the game changer. If you had a game changer, when you felt the wax canvas, you bought another game changer. Maybe hunters would realize I need this too to shoot off a rail because there's no way anybody that shoots long range competition would go hunting without a game changer in their stand. This potential crossover is leading Armageddon gear into the hunting market. These products that make competitors better shooters would also make a hunter a much better shooter. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a, a hunt line. We're finalizing it now because you think about it, hunting's not done from laying in the prone. You're sh always shooting off a barricade. You're shooting off a rail, off the window of a blind. Those are considered hard shots in competition as this knowledge goes more mainstream to the hunter, and it's happening now. I think hunters are gonna be very comfortable making ethical clean kill shots at much further distances. Competitors and hunters both benefit from a more stable shooting position, and so do the adaptive shooters. You got a lot of the, the, the wounded warrior and adaptive shooters now that, are, that have different injuries that preclude them from moving properly or even shooting from the wheelchair. So we've done a lot of work taking these bags and, and making them where guys can get a comfortable shooting position when they can't put their body in the position they want. They can still use those bags to, to get a good solid shooting position. That's something that, you know, it's cool to be a part of. The innovation is ongoing. The Armageddon Gear team is always developing the next must-have item. You saw a product we were working on that literally came from a Facebook message. Hey man, I use my tripod as rear support all the time. If there was a little bag that would stick to the side of the tripod leg that the gun would sit on, it would make it a lot easier. I'm like, man, that really would be a great idea. We had one done within two hours. VP of Operations Missy Gilliland leads that team that can turn an idea into reality. 
you know, will prototype something, take it to the matches. And I like seeing other competitors' reactions about things. And then you see it, you know, being able to use the product, you know, while you're shooting and everything, then, then you know you got something. And all of it 100% made in America. I get emails all the time, people asking, you know, is your products really made in America? It's, yeah, right here in Buena Vista, Georgia. Tom Fuller saw the need and made it a business. But even more so exciting to have your own idea that actually you work and you go to a match and you see hundreds of people using it and tell you it's a great product. It's super, super, I mean, the, that, that's really fulfilling. Well, you've made it to the end of another Shooting USA video on YouTube. And for that, we thank you. It does help the channel if you subscribe, like, and comment, and that will help us keep the content coming.